when we look at the current Ubuntu ISO, it is maybe big. The desktop image is 3.8 gigabytes and the server image is 1.5 gigabytes. Is that big? Is that small? Well, the only way to tell is relative to other distros out there. So here is just a random assortment of other popular distros. Fedora, 1.9 gigabytes. Manjaro, 3.8 gigabytes. PopOS, 2.5 gigabytes. EndeavorOS, 1.9 gigabytes. And so the OpenSUSE shills don't bother me once again. Tumbleweed is 4.3 gigabytes. So Ubuntu is kind of on the higher end of average, but nothing really that out of the ordinary. But we can go considerably smaller. There are distros that pride themselves on being really, really small. Distros like Puppy Linux. So the ISO for this one is, let's have a quick look. When it eventually goes, save it, 409 megabytes. But you can go even smaller than that. Gen 2 is 387 megabytes, but Gen 2 still provides you with a live CD environment. You can plug Gen 2 in and actually make use of it. Obviously, you're just doing things from the terminal and you're not going to be doing much with it, but you can use it. What if you wanted to go even smaller, having no live environment, just the absolute bare minimum you need to get the system installed? Well, there is a way to do that. That can be done with a pure network image like OpenSUSE Leap has, for example. This goes all the way down to 173 megabyte. Now, because I know the Tumbleweed people are going to be here, yes, Tumbleweed has one as well. This is 224 meg. Are you happy now? There are gradients with a network installer. Technically, Gen2 and Arch are network installers because you need an internet connection to actually install the distro. But if you take it to the absolute extreme, stripping out everything you don't need, don't need a GUI, get rid of it. Don't need these extra shells, get rid of them. Don't need these packages, you know, write text, get rid of them. Get rid of everything that isn't required. And you can get an ISO that is incredibly small. This makes it much easier to run on a very low end system and makes mass deployment for like, you know, a thousand systems incredibly easy. And Ubuntu is working on doing exactly this, or more accurately to say, doing a network image again, but actually doing it better and doing it well this time. But more on that towards the end. This was reported on by Joey Snedden over at OMG Ubuntu. Ubuntu devs working on new 140 megabyte mini ISO installer. But let's just go straight to the source, the Ubuntu mailing list. Now, we shouldn't actually know this is being worked on right now. Someone unrelated to Canonical, not working at Canonical, asked if the Ubuntu team would be interested in accepting a network-based installer of Ubuntu as an official flavor. Note, I'm asking this very early. I don't have the project I have in mind even started yet. I'm not even sure what I want to name this project. This is more of a testing the waters to see if this kind of thing is even a possibility before getting started. I've seen more than one person annoyed by the fact that the mini ISO net installer is no more. It was never officially supported anyway, but apparently people got use out of it. So it seems like something that would be handy if it still existed. I'm sure we're not going to start producing it again, so I got the idea of making something that could act somewhat similar to it. I asked people about this idea on Mastodon, and the response seemed fairly positive. Now... This developer has absolutely no idea how wrong they were. My idea is to either write my own installer or use a customized version of the Debian installer and package it into a flavor of its own, which would be capable of installing any supported version of any official flavor of Ubuntu. The flavor would be able to be held in a very small ISO file, preferably CD sized, and it would download and install all of the packages that make up the Ubuntu system 
at runtime. This would allow a user to install Ubuntu or any desired flavor thereof using a single installation medium rather than having to flash an ISO every time they want to make a drive install a different flavor. The new installation would be entirely up to date from the get go and it would enable the use of existing small storage media for those users who don't have sufficiently sized optical disks or flash drives. Now this is one of those cases where canonical being canonical basically shoots themselves in the foot. They are not very open about their roadmap unlike many other projects out there and uh yeah this was already being worked on internally. Hey Aaron, this is one of the things that suck when we don't publish our team's roadmaps to the public, which I'm trying to get our team to start doing, but it's so busy recently that we didn't manage to yet. I would uh, very much appreciate this, it would give me more to talk about. There is work on going on something like this, and actually this cycle, 423.04, the MPs for that are still in flight, but Dan Bungert, the maintainer of Subiquity, which is the server equivalent of the Ubiquity installer, is working on a project called Ubuntu Mini ISO. We already had a prototype done and tested, but now we're trying to land all of that to be built by the official infrastructure. The idea is a bit similar to what you described, but with a small difference on how the system to install is being downloaded for installation. The Ubuntu Mini ISO is a small bootable ISO that can be either downloaded and used on a CD slash USB drive or even via UEFI HTTP that brings up a dynamic TUI menu of what Ubuntu images you want to download slash install to your target system. It uses simple streams to select which images so it'll be quite customizable regarding the selection. The difference is that it then downloads the ISO of interest, I have no idea why there are dashes between that, into memory and chain boots into it, allowing the installation of any image as one would normally do. This has some limitations of course, since it needs sufficiently enough RAM. Without getting into the technical details of how, chain booting is basically a bootloader booting into another bootloader. So in this case, the Ubuntu Mini ISO is going to have its own bootloader, and then when everything is downloaded for the new system, that is going to have its own separate bootloader. Ubuntu Mini ISO can then load into that system, and you're basically good to go. And Dan Bungert, the creator of this new ISO, did chime in with some extra details. Now, apparently he did miss the, uh, the feature freeze, so he will be filing an exception. Maybe it'll happen this cycle, maybe it'll happen next cycle, depending on what happens with that exception. Either way, size. The bootleg build I'm doing of this are around 140 megabytes. I expect the official build to produce a similar answer. Download at runtime. Ubuntu Mini ISO achieved this by presenting a menu of ISOs that we could download, then with the user selection reserving some memory, downloading that ISO, and then k executing into it. ISOs in the menu. There is a Casper hook that downloads simple stream JSON data and hands it to the menu application. A small end cursor app then analyzes the JSON, finds what ISOs to offer, and does so. Now, that menu, as it currently stands, was not going to be supporting every flavor out there, but it could be extended to do that, perhaps conceptually, similar to how flavors are shown today. I actually don't know what this link is, I didn't check it. I am not entirely sure what point he was trying to make with this page. You've got the flavors listed here, you've got this big list down here, but this list doesn't include flavors, it's just different versions of regular Ubuntu. Maybe the point he's trying to get at is having some sort of list, but I'm not 100% sure. Now the only problem with adding flavors is the existing menu can fit on a single screen. So if we start adding flavors, I think we'll need some sort of nested menu support, but that's achievable. Or you could have a scroll bar. That's another option, but sure. Nested works, whatever is the option, either way is good. I have done a hack test run of having this new mini ISO chain boot to Lubuntu 22.04.2, and it all works fine. Now, if you want to keep an eye on the project, 
probably the best way to do so is just keep an eye over on the repo, canonical slash mini ISO tools. This is one of those many things out there which is probably completely irrelevant for most of the Linux users, but for those who do care, having this available like for wide deployment is incredibly useful. As we established earlier, Ubuntu used to have a mini ISO available. You could find this at Ubuntu Netboot Images. Now, if you go to Jammy Jellyfish, it's gonna try to send you over to the new Ubuntu server installer. The last one of these available was 18.04 LTS. If we go to AMD64, and then as we can see right here, mini ISO. The issue with this mini ISO is it wasn't really that well supported. So this was explained in the mailing list as well. That said, unlike the previous mini ISO, we fully intend that this be a supported and tested image. And crucially, unlike the mini ISO, which bypassed all of the installer logic in favor of raw package selection and therefore gave a different unsupported install result versus the installer on our full flavor images, this new mini ISO will boot the actual flavor installer and so any divergences in the installed system would simply be a bug. So with this old system, it was kind of like the way that Arch install works, where you can pick and choose which packages you want, which made it very difficult to ensure the system was going to be what is expected from Ubuntu. Now, as great as the mini Ubuntu ISO is, do you know what I wish existed? A graphical installer that also did the same thing. Rather than you having to go and download the Ubuntu ISO or the Ubuntu ISO or any of those other ISOs, just a unified installer that lets you pick whatever you want to grab. So I could just, you know, stick one on a thumb drive and then be good to go. This would be incredibly useful for anyone out there who likes to distro hop distro hop between different desktop environments. But while not being as convenient as a GUI installer, having that as an option with the Ubuntu Mini ISO is certainly going to be nice. But maybe you don't care at all. Let me know your thoughts down below. Is this something you would ever use? Do you even use Ubuntu? Do you run OpenSUSE instead? I would love to know. So, that's going to be it for me. If you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of what the? <laughs> These amazing people over here? Patreon, subscribe star, the bearer pay, down below. Ah, uh, that's gonna be it for me. Show. Peace out.